In this video, we'll go through the FAR25 compliance data expansion process, starting from the delta PS over PS ratio, and we're going to do it in Python. Let's dive in. Trois, deux, un, top, three, two, one, half, the Fly Test Engineering Channel. In this video, we're going to do some data expansion starting from the delta PS over PS ratio and expanding that to a delta HPC and delta VPC at some reference condition. And this is useful to check your data against FAR25 limits, for example. So the inputs to this video are a series of data that you got from many runs, many test points. Each each test point is at a different condition. So for instance, this minus 0 0.0004657 is exactly the same, the value that we got from our cloverleaf geometric method here. So this number coupled with the 130 knots and 6,000 feet is one data point. And here I have six data points, so six pressure ratios for six speeds and, and two altitudes, 6,000 and 1,500 uh, feet. Okay, so the civil regulations, and specifically FAR 25, they define acceptable levels for delta HPC and delta VPC, but we have so far reduced our data to a delta PS over PS ratio. So how do we go about doing this data expansion? we have to look at two, two sides, the truth source and the ship side, and then compare them to see what's the error. In green, we're going to have the truth source, and in red, we're going to have the ship side, which has errors, right? So from the truth source, we set the reference condition to, an, in this case for FAR25, it's going to be ISA level, uh, sea level, which is 0 feet and 15 degrees C. And then we calculate the ambient pressure at the reference condition, PA at reference condition, which we know is going to be P0. On the ship side, you start from your delta PS over PS and your PA at reference condition, and then you find the ambient pressure at the reference conditions, considering your error, so PS at reference altitude. And then from this pressure, you find what is the indicated altitude. Uh, for at that reference altitude, and then you compare both doing uh, uh, this delta, HC reference altitude minus HIC reference altitude. So to start from the beginning, we first define the reference altitude, and as I said, FAR25 asks you to use sea level, so 0 feet and T0, 15C or 288.15 Kelvin. So this is what we are defining here. HC reference altitude as 0 and T reference altitude as T0. And then we use the same formula we have used before to calculate what is the pressure at that altitude. Of course, we're going to get P0. Right, right there, it's P0. And now we can transport this reference to the wrong pressure that we have on our ship side, which is PS reference altitude. All right, so for each run, we have the pressure, the uh, static pressure at the reference altitude. And now we can calculate the pressure ratio delta, which is going to be this pressure over P0. And from delta, we can calculate what is the um, indicated instrument corrected altitude at the reference altitude. Okay, there is nothing different in the, these formulas. We have seen them before. And now we can calculate what is the delta H, delta HPC at the reference altitude. Okay, those are the, uh, and I just spotted an error here. This should be altitude, not lat. Okay, and those are the, uh, the differences in altitudes between our reference and whatever we saw in our aircraft. Okay, and because we're going to need QC over PA to calculate the airspeed correction, we find first a mock position correction and to obtain delta MPC from VIC and delta PS over PS. So let's run the same, uh, same thinking here. 
from the ship side, we start from our test condition, VIC test, and then calculate the differential, differential pressure ratio, QCIC over P0, for the test condition. From the output side, we calculate the pressure ratio delta, and then from QCIC over P0 and the delta, we get QCIC over PS at the test condition. And then we can calculate the instrument corrected indicated Mach for these conditions. And on the truth side, we start from Q QCIC over PS and delta PS over PS and get the QC over PA ratio. And then from QC over PA, we calculate the truth Mach number. And then we have both numbers, we just calculate the delta. And then to find v delta VPC, we continue from the truth side. From this uh, pressure ratio, delta reference L2, then QC over PA, we find QC over P0 now at reference altitude. And then we can calculate the instrument corrected truth airspeed at reference condition, VC at reference altitude. And on the ship side, is very similar. We start from QC over P0 at the reference altitude and our delta PS over PS to get QC over P0 at the reference altitude and then calculate the airspeed. And then we just do the delta. So, starting from the first step, QCIC over P0 for the test conditions, we use our indicated air speed to calculate this ratio. And then we use our altitude, indicated altitude that we got from our test runs, to calculate the pressure ratio delta IC test. Again, these formulas are the same. Notice that uh, I always transform to SI units, so everything that is in feet goes to meter, for example. And now we can multiply both, multiply QCAC over P0 and 1 over delta to get QCAC over PS now. And from this QCAC over PS, we can calculate the Mach number. And because we're going to apply this equation twice, once for the indicated Mach number and again for the truth Mach number, we can create a function that uh, we, we, we do this right here in the cell. So we define a function called m from q over p and we pass in a parameter that is q over p as a float and we expect a float to be returned by the function. So this function returns the square root of 5 times blah 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 which is this formula right there. And we can apply this, uh, this function by calling its name and passing in not just a float, but we can pass in the full vector that we have in NumPy. And Python is smart enough to understand that you're passing in a vector of floats and it's going to apply the function to each, each number of this uh, vector. So if you run this, we get, a, we get back a, a series of numbers, a vector, with the function applied to each one of them. Next, we can get QC over PA again from QCIC over PS and delta PS over PS. And now, and this is from the uh, truth side, and now we can calculate the truth Mach number uh, from QC over PA, right? Now that we have both Mach numbers, we can calculate the delta and see the errors. It's the, in, the, in the third order of magnitude for, for Mach number here. Next up, we're going to calculate the uh, delta ISA for reference altitude from this formula. And with delta ISA and QC over PA, we can calculate QC over P0 at the reference altitude. We're doing this so that we can calculate our VC at reference altitude with this formula here. Right? Same idea, we create a function that will return this, uh, this formula here, and we apply it to the vector that we have so far, right? Returning the uh, instrument corrected calibrated airspeed for the test runs. And we're going to do something very similar to obtain QCAC over P0, right? And now we can calculate VIC using QCAC over P0 the same way and calculate the deltas here. So now we have everything we need for our FAR25 compliance check. We have the delta H's and the delta V's. 
Now to construct the graphs, we're going to first look at the altitude. And what we need here is 30 feet is the uh, minimum boundaries that we are going to set. And then after, after 100 knots, it's going to be 30 feet per 100 knots. So if we are at 200 knots, it's going to be 60 feet and so forth. And to do this, we set the kink point at 100 knots and we construct a, a vector here, a linearly spaced vector that starts from zero, goes to the kink point, and we have 10 data points. Hello, it's me from the future here, and I'm editing the video. I noticed that I did not touch base on a very important point, which is you can access the doc string of a function from within the JupyterLab environment. And to do this, you can just uh, put the cursor right after the function, and you can press shift tab to access the function signature and doc string. So this is very useful if you're learning the, the language and you don't remember which parameters you need to pass into the function. But here's gonna tell you it's the NumPy lin space and you, start, and you pass in the start, stop and the num number of points. Then there are other parameters that uh, you can read the explanations here in the doc string. Um, which will tell you exactly what each parameter does. Hope this helps. Back to the regular schedule. This is a function from NumPy. In the top limit, we just construct a vector of ones on the same shape, meaning the same size as the, the uh, vector that we have up here. But now we multiply ones by 30 to get 30 feet. And the bottom limit is gonna be 30 negative. From the kink point on, we construct another vector up to VMO, again, picking just 10 values. But now the limit's gonna be whatever X we have times 0.3, meaning we have 30 feet for every 100 knots that we increase our airspeed. And the bottom limit is going to be negative, the top one. Here for, for plotting, we first set the parameters for figure size 12 by 7, that's the aspect ratio and the size of the fig figure. And then we plot the x limit 1 against top limit y, x limit 1 against bottom limit y, x limit 2, top limit y2, x limit 2, y limit y2. Here we're plotting in red, and the label is going to be FAR25. And for the data, we are going to plot VIC runs, against delta HPC reference altitude. We're plotting using plus signs, a marker. In blue, the label is gonna be flight test and the marker size is gonna be 10. And lastly, we set the X label for the X uh, axis, Y label for the Y axis, the title grid, we turn on, show the legend and show the graph. So let's, uh, let's first run this cell here to load up the values and create the vectors. And now we can plot here. And let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole graph where we have the title. And we can see pretty well that this is the FAR25 phonograph, the classic, that we have at 100 knots, we have the flat, below 100 knots, we have the flat limit for plus or minus 30 feet. And from 100 knots on, we have uh, uh, 30 feet per 100 knots. We can see that our values are well within, not well, but on the borderline on this one, but we, it, they are within the FAR25 limits. So they are a pass in this case. For the altitude, it's very, very similar, except now that uh, the airspeed error of the installation, excluding airspeed indicator instrument calibrated cal calibration error, may not exceed 3% or 5 knots. So 5 knots is our minimum, and then 3% after, after that. So let me just zoom back in so that we can see better what's written. And we have a pretty similar construct. We define a kink point that is 5 over 0 0.03. And then the x limits from stall to kink point, 10, no 10 values. We construct a vector of 1s multiplied by 5 knots. Bottom one is going to be minus 5. From the kink point to VMO, 10 values multiply whatever x we have by 0.03, 3%, and then the bottom limit's gonna be negative the top. So we run this to construct our 
our vectors. And again, very similar, we plot the two, the x limit one and two, and with the respective y limits one and two in red with label FAR25. But now for data, we, we plot VIC runs against delta VPC reference altitude. Same thing with using plus signs in blue with label flight test. Okay, let me zoom out again. And here's the uh, speed error gra uh, graph where you have the uh, FAR25 envelope starting at five knots on the bottom and then increasing as you have the kink point up at 3%. And we can see that all of the data that we, we have for these runs are again within the boundaries so they are a pass. I hope this content was useful for you and in the next video of this series we'll explore the matrix inversion method. See you there!